Ladies and gentlemen, charge on out there and defend those longbowmen. We'll only send, you know, a small army of about 120 archers. That'll do fine. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm the Spiffing Brit, and today we are playing some Age of Empires 2 HD Edition. HD Edition? Sorry, what? Sorry, these graphics HD. Um, well, if you say so, game, very well I'll believe you. Now, after I did that Rise of Nations video, apparently all of you decided that you'd also love to see an Age of Empires 2 video where I exploit some of the greatest mechanics this game has to offer. Now, for a game that's been out since 1999, I must say, this is actually one of the most polished RTS gaming experiences you can look for. However, that doesn't mean that there's not a good few many exploits still lying around in this bad boy. And also, for some reason, the Rise of Nations video managed to end up on YouTube trending. So hey, if you guys want to help this video end up on YouTube training, then it's quite simple. Just give it a like, a comment, and who knows, maybe we can get something from 1999 up on the gaming trend trending tab again alongside Fortnite and FIFA because, yep, that's certainly going to confuse a lot of people when they stumble across this bad boy. I mean, look at this beautiful game. It's certainly got a different graphic design from most modern games. So, where are we going to begin? Well, naturally, we're going to start with a lovely single-player game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you the best way to defeat AIs in a perfectly cheesy manner. Actually, before we jump into the game, let me just do a quick check to see if anyone's still playing this game in 2019. This is almost 20 years after the game's released. Let's do a quick lobby break. Oh my good lord, what on earth? Why are there so many people still playing this game? This is incredible. Oh my goodness, I'm blown away. I am absolutely blown away. If you still play Age of Empires 2 in 2019, give me a shout in the comments section. Hats off to all of you, you deserve a free cup of tea on the house. Good lord. You make the gaming community proud. Who needs a new AAA game when you can just play the same game for 20 years? So ladies and gentlemen, I've decided to create one of the greatest exploitative games that you are ever going to see. Today you're going to watch me defeat three AIs using the magical power of the Britons. That's right, I'm playing Age of Empires 2, so I might as well do the Queen proud and play her nation. Huzzah! Anything for you, Queenie. Mwah. So yes, naturally we're playing the Britons, mostly because they have some very interesting unique units which will allow us to uh, cheese the game a little, to say the least. And naturally, I want to put myself against the Saracens. The reason why is, well, uh, it's it's going to become clear very quickly. Yeah, the Saracens have a extra special late game unit, which technically should be able to counter our late game unit perfectly. However, there's one way around that bad boy. So, this is the setup we're going for. However, oh, I think difficulty? No, no, no. We're not putting on standard. We're going up to hard. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not actually very good at Age of Empires 2. I do need to point that out. If you're here to watch incredible micro plays, yeah, you've tuned into the wrong channel. I'm British and yes, I drink a lot of tea, but my abilities, they're just not what they were back in 1999. So, let's give this a try. Ah, uh, here we go. We dive right into it. So, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, grab your cups of tea. Right, and we are finally in here today, ladies and gentlemen. As you might notice, we have the entire map. We can see all of the enemy movements and we can see all of our own movements. It kind of just makes the game a bit easier because at the end of the day, the hardest AI can see all of this, so uh, why can't I? So yes, that's what we've got going for us. It's kind of important to work out where our boards with the AI line up and we've kind of rolled quite lucky. We have one crossing here and one crossing here and beyond that, the AI has absolutely no access to our land. So logically speaking, as long as we wall this area off and this area off and have have control of the seas somehow, then uh, we should be fine. So yeah, we are rushing our feudal age research tech up, and as soon as we get this, we can unlock a whole host of research benefits. But most importantly, we're basically researching this just so that we can try and rush into the castle age. The castle age is really where the Britons, which is the nation we're playing, starts to shine, because the Britons start to unlock their longbowmen. Longbowmen are like archers, except they have a lot more range, like a ridiculous amount of range. There is no counter to the amount of range they have, in fact. Right, so we've got a berry farming sorted, we've got our sheep farming sorted, we've got a little bit of a gold mine going, we've got a small kind of like protection force of, I guess these are cavemen with clubs. I mean this game basically says it's high definition, but it kind of tricks high definition by just forcing the camera away from the unit so you don't notice how low res they are. But hey, you know, Age of Empires, it's cute. Pretty beautiful game to play, but yes, it does have its many issues. Oh, the ARs are coming. Bugger. Right, okay. It's more watchtower time, I'm afraid. At the moment, really all we can do is just delay against the inevitable because these really hard AIs, they are a pain to try and defeat. Well, I'm getting the feeling that I'm in a bit of a tricky situation here, if I'm honest. We don't really have too many counters against a continuous endless spam of units. At the end of the day, it's not too bad. It could have been worse. 
Right, and we're back. It's attempt two. Hopefully things are going to go better. I just want to kind of do the basic starting strat of gather all of your sheep up in one place and then slowly begin the massive sheep genocide that this game lets you do. And of course, we're going to do a very similar strategy of basically rushing the castle age. But also we want to make sure that we hold our choke points. Besides, there are sheep on these choke points, so we might as well grab them. Now I've done a quick check of our area and we're in a bit of an interesting situation, which is that we have quite a lack of stone. Now our main deposit of stone is trapped behind a load of trees. So really, we need to hurry as many men onto this so that we can excavate trees. Uh, and the AI is doing the classic AI game of controlling the seas by building loads and loads of docks. Realistically speaking, I also need to do that. We can't miss out on the incredible game that is fish as well, so yes, build this bad boy. Fish in this game, they're just a ridiculous source of food, like 225 there, 225, 200, they're just endless. And then once you get a technology, you can just spend 100 wood to get an infinite supply of fish. It's incredible. I have no idea why this game doesn't see that, you know, it's possible to actually run out of fish in the real world. As far as this game's aware, if you can just build a wooden cage, fish appear. It's pure science, in fact. Now, many of you might be wondering why have I actually chosen to go against an entire group of only Saracens? The reason being that my perfect endgame unit is in fact the Longbowman. The Saracens endgame unit is, of course, the Camel. Now, when you come down to it, the Mamlukian Camel is actually an incredible unit. Lots and lots of damage, very, very high tier, very difficult to actually counter. However, the Longbowman can't actually defeat them at all. The longbowmen absolutely suck against them. The one advantage they do have is that the longbowmen can hide behind walls. And walls can be defended with towers. And you can put your longbowmen in towers to have towers shoot for extra damage. Now you might be sat there thinking, well, hey, Spiff, hang on a second. Why are you talking about building towers and using them to defend against camels? Towers don't really have any bonuses. But that's where you're wrong, because towers have a bonus, which allows them to do extra damage, and I mean a lot of extra damage, against ships. That's right, ships. And then you'll be sat there thinking, well, hang on a second, Spiff. Towers do extra damage against ships. Okay, that makes sense. That checks out. That's all fine. But what has this got to do with defeating camels? Well, that's because this is a very special game. Because for some reason, and I don't know what kind of science the developers of this game have been tapping into, but ships and camels in the eyes of Age of Empires 2 are the exact same thing. So that's right, ladies and gentlemen. If we build enough defense towers to defend ourselves from the camels, the camels are going to shoot flaming arrows into the camels and for some reason those flaming arrows are going to count as if they were attacking a ship and do increased damage. Well, everyone's advanced to the castle age. I thought I was going to be ahead of this, but no, apparently everyone's going for the castle age these days. Right, it kind of makes me feel like I'm suddenly less important. It makes me sad, but oh well. We've made it into the castle age. That's all that matters. Ah, and here we have it. We can build the fish trap, which is the infinite supply of fish that I was talking about. Yeah, it's uh, totally got a counter. I mean, if you had a tiny pond in the middle of nowhere, you could just place down a ton of fish traps and hey, infinite food. The game's like, well, this all seems fine to me. Of course, researching the wonderful legendary thing that is heated shot. What is this? 100 125% more damage to ships. Oh, I know, it's incredible, isn't it? Oh, it would appear that we're apparently getting attacked. Oh, no, our tower is getting attacked by a demolition ship and a war galley. Well, I have no idea what they're attempting to do, but nice try, AI, ship design. <laughs> yes, you just keep trying to fight out against a tower which has increased damage against you. Actually, it doesn't yet. I need 350 food. I have no food. Some would expect that we were playing the Russians rather than the Britons, but yes, I know. I'm a Brit and I've managed to run out of food. <sighs> Somehow. There we go, we've heated shot. We are now going to do a lot better against some of these pesky units. As you could see there, our watchtower just sniped that Mamlukian cavalry a quarter of its health almost instantly. For some reason, I have no idea why this still hasn't been fixed, but a camel is the exact same as a boat in this game. It makes sense to me, ladies and gentlemen. Makes sense to me. Oh, and we've got our castle set up, which means longbowmen. So, we just want to spam out longbowmen. They cost wood and gold, nothing more, nothing less. All right, I'm going to start garrisoning a few of these towers with longbowmen. Probably not the ones that are ablaze at the moment. That's you usually a bad sign. No, 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 long bowman away, long bowman away. Civilians, finish that construction, you're at 95%, for goodness sake. Build it, build it, civilians. 99% and you die! No. Oh. Goodness sake. Right, okay, send a civilian over. I literally just need one civilian to punch that twice. All right, the good news is that our watchtowers on this side are actually holding up rather well. And even though they threw loads and loads of fire ships against this wall, the walls have held. Very proud of that. Now, archers basically increase the amount of times the guard tower shoots. So if we have increased ship damage slash mamluk damage, the more longbowmen we have in a tower, the more damage they can do generally. And we're just going to eventually reach a point where we can garrison five longbowmen inside a tower, and there's just no way for the AI to handle it. Of course, 
course, the only way that you could typically normally handle this is if you have a trebuchet. Oh, here they come. They've got the Mamlukians coming out, including some fire ships. Interesting. Now, the fire ships are dead set on destroying our tower because in the AI of the fire ships, the tower is the greatest threat. The only issue is they have no range to take out a tower with three longbowmen in it. But I appreciate their attempt nonetheless. We need trebs. There is almost no counter to a trebuchet because for some reason everyone was like, hey, you know, we'll just give it the maximum range possible. What could go wrong? Uh, the answer, quite a lot of things could go wrong, in fact. And as you can see, even though we're at the bottom of the leaderboard, the AI is in no fit state to even try and counter us. There is genuinely nothing they can do. Right, and I think it's time we start to move into the Imperial Age, mostly so that we can get this wonderful piece of research that I like to call the trebuchet. Trebuchet and longbowman combination, it's just phenomenal. There's no counter. The AI has many issues against it. Now, I know I say that there's no counter to a lot of things, but trebuchets are just genuinely stupid. Trebuchets can snipe units at ridiculous range when said unit has no chance of dealing any damage against them. I think it's time we should probably actually start spamming out some longbowmen. There's no real reason to not just have an endless stockpile of about 30 longbowmen. Also, we now have this tower built in a position so that it's going to continually harass this dock. That's just going to force the AI to try and come over here and do something about it, even though realistically speaking, that's not going to happen. Finally made it into the Imperial Age, we can finally upgrade our guard tower into keeps which are going to be even better at literally everything and finally ah oh, the greatest unit known to man trebuchets they're 200 wood apiece and 200 gold so they are very costly but these things they're one hit units they have ridiculous range you see this really strange mill setup that the AI has going yeah we can just put a trebuchet here and it's going to shoot across there and defeat that oh i can hear a few shots going in oh, it would appear the fire ships are trying to get started on this guard tower yeah that's just not going to happen especially now that it's just been upgraded into a keep offering it extra damage and literally extra everything. Also over here we can get siege engineers which gives our siege weapons plus one range. That includes the trebuchet. Yeah. I oh, have a second. They appear to have been... They've just wandered through our bloody walls. Oh you left the gate open. We left the bloody gate open. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, that's my fault. I left an AI in the middle with the gate open. Basically, this tower annoyed the yellow AI and told them that, hey, look, this gate's open. We need to run through it. And we can actually start to build wonders. Wonders are a nice way of basically finishing off the game, but I find them a bit too cheesy for me. They're just not that fun in comparison to most other forms of victory. And we're going to build a second castle just so that we can kind of increase our production of trebuchets and longbowmen. Oh, wow, well, they are really trying to send some units. The AI is not happy with everything we've got going on here. So they just continually send boats over, but these are boats that are costing like a few hundred wood a piece and we can just destroy them in a few seconds anyway we've got a few trebuchets set up here so we're just going to unpack our trebuchets here and now that our trebuchet is unpacked it's just going to start shelling that farm over there as you can see bam one hit and that should be the farm gone bam there you go over on our side of the river everything's looking great for the ai ever so slightly less so oh no 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 what are you doing standing in the gate oh my god but as you can see we just got a ton of hussars sat here hussars that can't do anything against us trebuchets can you hit that yes you can wow this is just going to be a shooting gallery then. Oh, here we go. We can finally unlock elite longbowmen, which are even stronger. And we can also get yeomen, which increases archers' range and attack by plus one and two. Once again, just adding even more salt to the pyre. There's just no way to start to counter any of these bad boys. Oh, and there we go, a mamluk. Yeah, this kind of just proves the point. The elite mamluks, they're great units, like genuinely so much damage. And they can also do a ranged attack, which makes them better than most. The only issue, of course, we can shoot them and do the same damage that we do to a ship. Yep, yeah, perfectly fine. I can see no issue with that going awry. So we're also going to start to research elite longbowmen. Stronger, better armoured, more attack. So Yeoman have kind of increased the damage from each archer up to 10 now, which is very good. Now, of course, we're going to research elite longbowmen, which take that even further. Yes, we've basically won the naval game just by towers. You know, you don't need ships to control the seas. You just need quite a few well-placed towers. Now, one of the things we could do is try and rush the enemy with our longbowmen just to try and defeat them. If we kind of build up a large swarm of longbowmen, I'd say probably about 50, you can generally take out any unit the enemy tries to throw at you. Wow, there's a lot of hussars lying around. Yellow have really built up quite the army. I'd love to see them try and throw it into my wall if I'm honest. I'm wondering if I can maybe bait them by throwing an elite longbowman here. There we go. And as you can see our elite longbowmen have 11 attack. I guess station our longbowmen in the gate. I feel really sorry for this one little builder that's just continually trying to build houses on the coastline against trebuchets. Okay, nice try. Nice try. Wabam. <laughs> <laughs> the issue is, every time the AI does this, this is 50 wood a piece, and we're just sending over a flaming ball of fire. Mamluk units on paper, incredible. 11 attack, they can lob swords, they can fight manually. Only issue is, 
Game thinks camels can swim and so must be a boat. I have no idea how that ended up in the programming. Oh my god, what is this? Look at the monk swarm. That's 12 monks all in a line. All right, so right here, what you're seeing is a group of 30 longbowmen. 31 longbowmen. You might think, hey, these guys are really at risk of, I don't know, getting hit by cavalry or... But actually, they're ridiculously powerful. Because there's just so many of them, they can target a unit and just instantly destroy it. So we're going to send them out through this gate. Or oh, how about this villager there? There you go. Longbowmen, open fire. Yeah, the accuracy of longbowmen, it's not the best. <laughs> even with ballistics researched. But you know, they make attempts. And it's completely fine to actually kill civilians in this day and age because look, he's a farmer. That's not a civilian. That's a farmer. He's funding the Red War effort. So, technically part of the supply chain and we are legally allowed to kill them. I think. I haven't read the Geneva Convention in quite a while. And I mean, this is only 30 of them. We could quite easily get 60 of them. No problem. How are my longbowmen doing? Oh, here we go. The AI has now decided that, hey, um, we need to do something about the fact they just destroyed one of our ports. The AI has now decided they would like to attack. So they're just going to plow the horses into the longbowmen. So yeah, we've basically just made the AI waste almost all of their resources. Even with hand cannoneers that do 17 damage a pop, these keeps and longbowmen, they can just outrange the hand cannoneers. I'd appear the green empire has also been completely wiped out. Hey, you know, our attack against the AI has gone rather well. And by attack against the AI, I mean we destroyed a fishing hut and then they sent about 100 units to their death. So, you know, it's been a success, I'd say. Now, I'm not too sure how many units we lost. I think we might have lost maybe one or two. I can't believe it's any more than that. So at the end of the day, this has been a great success. The AI is now trying to line up on the coastline to defeat this tower. Yep, yeah, you give that a try AI. I believe in you. So go. these are all the longbowmen we have left. After doing a quick count, it would appear that we have lost exactly one and only one. Uh, now I'm just going to send them back because I've queued up another 30 longbowmen. So yeah, we're going to have uh, 60 longbowmen after this. Once we kind of reach that kind of stage, we can just waltz on into any capital and defeat them. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what these longbowmen can do. If this is a success then this could actually be I think maybe my second game where I've managed to beat the hard AI. This is a game from 1999 where basically they decided hey if people can't actually play or beat this game then they're just not good enough to play it. It's nice to have a game that's very accessible but it's also a welcome change to have a game where it's literally just like hey we're gonna slap you in the face 90 times and you're gonna enjoy it. it. Certainly was a different time back then. I've basically found a way to trick the yellow AI and force it into building resources by just having one single war galley over here. If we just have that repeatedly pester the archer range it, for some reason it basically is forcing the yellow AI to just build as many galleons as possible and the galleons just sail around here and of course so that means they get hit by this tower and that's down to half health and then there's this tower and this tower. Uh, the red player is built up a really really large army. This is probably about a hundred or so units right here. Typically the way a player would try and break this is to use boats to just land a load of troops. The issue with that of course at the moment is that my keeps are so powerful that you just can't sail ships. It's just not really safe at the moment on the water. Sure you can sail down here and do a bit of fishing but that's about as far as you can get. I've decided to do some diversifying as well in my research. I've managed to research the Onager. Uh, the Onager is effectively a inferior version of the trebuchet. Many of you might know it by the term catapult and as you can tell the catapult is of course inferior to the trebuchet. So we're just going to build a few more trebuchets. I think I'd like to try and bait the Red Army into throwing itself against me. There you go. This is what 60 longbowmen look like. They can do a lot of damage. Oh here they go. Yep the army is now being tricked into coming. So Yellow Army however is decided that the gate is open and so they are going to try and come on in. Yes, the Yellow Army has decided to send its entire army around through the red side because they're so desperate to defeat this one boat destroying their single archery range and they saw that this was the only open gate. <laughs> So they've chased their entire army through enemy territory just to try and get over to this gate. I've basically just accidentally found a way to trick the AI into attacking each other. That's not bad at all. Are they going to chase us? I guess maybe if we let one of them get through the gate, that might. There we go. Oh, it has been enough to convince them to come. Right, look at this. They've brought even catapults. Oh, come on. Everyone knows catapults are inferior to trebuchets. In fact, catapults are so inferior, they're even inferior to the elite English longbowmen who can attack for 11 damage. Open fire on that catapult. It's so far away, but it's it doesn't make a difference. We can hit it. You know something's kind of perfectly balanced in this game when an elite longbowman can outrange a catapult. Actually, no, I'd say that's perfectly balanced. It's representing the inferiority. Uh, so, yes, that was another perfectly fine battle, as you can see by the... Uh... Uh, this game's pretty morbid. That's a lot of dead bodies. <laughs> So this is another 30 longbowmen to add to our list. So we should be up to just under 90 longbowmen now. Uh, by kind of like standing in the gate, we've kind of tricked the AI into that this is their one moment where they can attack. 
and now we just want to make sure we set the gate to locked and we've baited some of the AI to actually come in and now we can just attack the rest there we go and longbowman focus on that very annoying caped ram as we can see it's got 200 health so a couple of hits from the archers and that's down oh a few of our units are getting shot so one of the lovely things we can do is just move them back and they can shoot from range i'm pretty sure the longbowmen excluding the trebuchet have quite possibly the longest range in the game it's our longbowmen have a range of 12 it would appear which is a longer range than hand cannoneer it's a longer range than this boat longbowmen very good good unit 10 out of 10 would recommend again at this point of the game, I just need to basically out-resource the AIs. Eventually, they're going to run out of stone and wood and gold, just like I have, effectively. Except when they run out, they're then going to start to try and charge into solid walls. Trebuchets versus boats. An interesting battle, some would say, but surprisingly effective. Right, longbowmen, fire! That's all we needed. I'm going to start to pack up my wonderful horde of trebuchets, the reason being that it's time we move out. I'm going to gather the archer swarm and basically just park them over here. And I think it's time we just actually end up defeating the yellow because there's no real need to have them alive so we're just gonna put our archer swarm here and move the trebuchets up behind them and what's that you want to bring over some boats now that you've seen that we're moving an army out well i'm afraid they're not really gonna be able to do anything but nice try nonetheless there we go so the archers you just form up a little defensive line and no matter what really comes our direction we can outrange it and out dps it so i mean these horses can't really get in range of an attack which is nice a yeah, close range longbowmen more effective than horses an unknown point of history for some i'm sure and i do believe that is the yellow army defeated which now means that it's much easier for us to push out into their land the red army it's now trying to come on over here to get through a gate which is now locked and so it will now get shot uh, who knows what they were doing and then hopefully we can finally make the push on the yellows that i've been wanting to do and here we have it the legendary humble trebuchet out here fighting for a better world defeating naval units with archers and i just don't know what we've done to the game but hey longbowmen they're great they really are and here we have it we're destroying a town center we're absolutely smashing up all the AI units. I don't really think the yellow AI is going to stand a chance from this point on. He's got a castle set up. I did not see that coming. And I'm going to demonstrate to you the ridiculous power of trebuchets. Uh, castles, they're meant to be some of the trickiest units to defeat in the game, basically. But as long as you stay out of their range, they're really not too bad. So this castle has a range of 11. We're just going to destroy this castle, the strongest building in the game. One of the hardest buildings to defeat in the game. Can it shoot back? No. Can it fight back? No. Oh, and it would appear Saladin has just resigned. That's the yellow player. Yep, the AI can resign in this game. So yeah, we've uh, successfully managed to defeat the yellow player. I guess it's now just on to the next one. Ah, oh, the civilians. Look at them standing around trying to get covered by this lovely building. Alas, it will not happen. I hope if you've learned anything here today, it's that even against hard AI, with enough practice and a very decent start, even you too can manage to defeat a very difficult AI using only ranged weapons. Because in my opinion, ranged weapons are vastly superior than standard weapons. Absolutely nothing can beat a good old archer. Right, I think this is it ladies and gentlemen i'm not sure how many longbowmen i have here but i think i've just trained up i think it's somewhere along the lines of just over 350 longbowmen ladies and gentlemen begin the invasion commence the attack my friends there we go begin the advance my friends trebuchet is included okay now we've aggroed all of the enemies it's time we walk on out of there we want to bring them all over here so that we can face them rather than actually having to fight them all there's no point actually fighting them over there we can summon all of them over here and do a nice little fair fight where we are behind some fortified walls there we go and lock there we go so now we've summoned over the entire red army and using our several hundred longbowmen we shall begin opening fire on them you might also notice that the game is starting to really slow down now it's having some problems i think coming to terms with just the amount of longbowmen that's happening here what do we got over here just hundreds of more wing tassars just standing around actually can we out treb their treb their trebuchet is lacking one range over our trebuchet can we shoot theirs without it hitting us yes we can it's Treb Wars, ladies and gentlemen, and the only winner is us, of course. Although even apparently our longbowmen actually have shots on the trebuchet over there. Hassan, what's going on here? Why have we got a ton of longbowmen? Longbowmen, open fire! Wait, did you guys march all the way round? Oh my goodness, they must have been set to aggressive. Right, ladies and gentlemen, charge on out there and defend those longbowmen. We'll only send, you know, a small army of about 120 archers. That'll do fine. Uh, they're being a nice little distraction force. Right, longbowmen, open fire and save your friends, or what's left of them. 
Oh, just look at them roll on in, though. This is a good sight to behold. There's a boat there. I don't like that. Get rid of that. What do we got? We got a house there, right? How fast can you all destroy this house? There we go. Begin firing. Wooden arrows versus stone building. Who will win? That's right. Wooden arrows. Quite a lot of them. And at this point, there is nothing they can do to actually get solid infantry units against us. They can't build them fast enough. A trebuchet against infantry is not a good idea. It just can't do enough damage. Logically, the only ranged unit you can do to try and stop a horde of longbowmen is a catapult. But the issue is catapults don't have enough range to actually take out longbowmen. They're in a bit of a catch-22 situation where there is absolutely nothing they can do to stop the absolute endless swarm that is just a ton. I mean an absolute ton of longbowmen. There we go. Soon we'll be in the heartlands of the Red Territories. There's nothing they can do to stop us. Absolutely nothing. But I'm wondering, could we use archers to defeat this castle? Alright, come on. Archers, away you go. Begin firing. I believe. I really do believe. For some reason they are as panicked and just built five siege rams. <laughs> okay. That's going to really help you in this situation. Thanks AI. Good participation. Oh wow, this is a lot of arrows. <laughs> this castle stands no chance. Range units in this game. They're great fun. They really are. The thing is, the best way to counter range units is to push them with ground units like horses. But you can't push them if there's an absolute horde of them. Because your units just can't get in there in time to actually defeat them. And by giving these units extra range, it means that you can't even use range units to defeat range units. Because the range of the longbowmen is just, it's completely off the chart. It's beyond anything else this game has. Oh, there we go. We've done it. We've absolutely gone and done it, ladies and gentlemen. We are victorious. The AI player decided to resign. Something about, I guess, this setup of infinite longbowmen and not enough resources. Anyway, if you've enjoyed what I've done, then I'd strongly recommend giving this video a like. And why not give it a try yourself at home? Now I think we should quit to the menu and see what damage we did. We effectively came first in every regard, excluding society. What even is a society? We take a look at the military stats. We killed the most units at 1,836. We lost the least units at 202. We raised the most buildings at 202. We lost the least buildings and we had the largest army. Oh, it was 351. There we go. We peaked at 351 longbowmen. Not bad at all. Very happy with that. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. I've been the Spiffing Brit. If you have enjoyed it, then please do give the video a like because it has certainly been great fun making it. Of course, if you want to see more, then do consider subscribing so that you get notifications of when I upload. And of course, as always, a huge thank you to my wonderful, majestic Patreons because these lovely sausages support all of our silly little videos. Now, if you sat there and you're like, hey, actually, quite enjoyed this video but I don't know has he got videos that I'd also like to watch then I can tell you one thing yes take a look at this video now on screen you're gonna absolutely love it it's perfect for you you're going to enjoy it anyway I'll see all of you in the next one have a lovely evening bye bye and make sure to go refill that cup of tea I know you haven't got one Dave you might have gone through this entire video without a cup of tea but now you need to get one <laughs>